great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Y'all, this is our hope. Um, I hope that y'all enjoy this as much as I did. And happy Easter, and I can't wait to see what kind of our brings today. the Son, 
giving God this magnificent glory. The glory of the Father that sent His Son. The glory of the Son who would come and give His life for a ransom for many. God, we all in this room, God, take part in the reward of that ransom. God, we couldn't pay the debt that stood against us. God, we thank you that you sent your son. God, we thank you for the blood. The blood of Jesus that was applied to our life, to our record of debt that stood against us. God, that is wiped clean only by the blood. Lord, we don't deserve the mercy and the grace of the cross or of the resurrection. But God, we thank you. God, we're humbled by it. Lord, I pray that today is, God, we hear this Easter message, God, that we just get something from it, God, that would change our hearts. God, would renew us. Let us walk away different. God, we love you. In your holy sweet name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Don't it feel like that when they were singing that song, Inside, you could just feel it roaring inside of you, and you're getting ready. For those who's played any type of sports, I don't care what type of sports it is, you know, right before you go out on the field and you hear the fight song sing, and you just get fired up, you come running out of that, that field house, and you break through, and you just can't wait to play. Boy, when she was singing, thank you. Thank you. Blood. You know what? We serve a risen Savior today. He's alive. He's alive. And you know, it should bring excitement to us as we think about all the things that Jesus has done for us. Today, He made it where we are no longer dead. If we surrender our life to Him, we are alive in Jesus. He's alive. You know what? No tomb could hold Him. And as I travel to Tanzania, there's uh, all over the world today, there are people worshiping and they are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. You know, uh, my friend Paul, which is probably watching right now from Tanzania, this morning, early eight hours ago, maybe a little bit more than that now, but um, he, he had service. You know what they were celebrating today? Jesus is alive. And, and, and all over the world today, I want you to just think about, people are celebrating today that Jesus is alive. There's over 4,200 different religions in the world today. And you know the one thing that sets us apart from every other religion is the life that Jesus lived, his death, and his resurrection. You know no other God that anyone worships. I don't care what you go to. You can go to the Islam belief and, and Allah I, I, when, when we talk about when we talk about Muhammad and we look at Muhammad and, and we think about the things that he did and the way they worship him, they have to go to a grave once a year. They travel all the way across the world to go to stand in front of a grave to go and worship a man that is dead. But today, I'm telling you, we come to worship a risen Savior. He is alive. You know, I love, I love when I get to be there and, and they just get to challenge me with that. You know, they'll ask me all kinds of questions about, how do we know? And you know, normally when I come and, and we have a service like this, normally we would go through and we would talk about all the different ways that we know that Jesus was alive. The different witnesses of people who've seen him and was there. And you know, you can go to 1 Corinthians 15, and you can start in verse 3 and start reading down, and you can see all the different witnesses that witnessed Jesus being alive. But this morning, I want, I want to challenge you in a different way. I want us to look, by all means, we're going to talk about the resurrection and he's alive because it changes everything about what me and you and the Christianity, with Christianity hinges on the fact that Jesus is alive. Now, in order to be able to understand this, I want you to think about that death is a reality. Every one of us, is physically going to die unless the Lord comes back for us. Every one of us is going to die physically unless the Lord comes back for me and you. The, the scriptures tells us that in Hebrews 9, 27. Here's what he says. And in as much as it is appointed for man to die once and after this comes judgment. 
Every one of us is going to die. One day, we're going to die, and then comes judgment. So we know that everyone is going to be a part of physical death. We also know that there is another death, and that's called a spiritual death. A spiritual death. And how the spiritual death happened, if you go back to Genesis chapter 2, and you look in Genesis chapter 2, it is very clear, starting in verse 16, you remember that, that God was talking to Adam and he told them to not eat the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That if they ate the tree of that tree, that they would surely die. And, and Eve and Adam took of that fruit and they ate of the fruit. And when they ate of the fruit, it brought death into the world. It brought death into the world. And we see that when it brought death, when it brought death, it separated us from God. Listen to Romans 5, 12 says, Therefore, just through one man's sin, one man. See, when he created Adam, he created him, he placed him in a perfect garden, he did everything. But he gave us free will to make decisions for ourselves. And for a man to show his love to God, he obeys the things that God says. Adam and Eve chose to disobey God. They ate of the fruit. It brought sin into the world. So, therefore, just as through one man's sin entered into the world, and death through that sin. And so death spreads to all men because all have sinned. See, we all have sinned. Every one of us has sinned and falls short. We were not born. We were born, when we were born, we were born and we inherited that spiritual death. It automatically came to us and we inherited the spiritual death because of our sin nature. We also know another thing about death, that we're going to have an eternal death also. An eternal death. We will either choose to have a relationship with Jesus and we will spend eternity with God. But dead in those sins... If we do not trust Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, we will spend eternity in a place called hell. We choose to put on the wrath of God on us. Now just to kind of show you how the sin nature works, how many of you have ever told a lie? Every one of us. If you didn't, put your hand down and now you can raise your hand because we're all in the same boat. All right. So we all have, we all see that we, we do things that's not pleasing to God. Let me ask you a question. Did you ever spend time teaching your kids how to lie? No. We didn't teach them to lie. Matter of fact, we taught them to tell the truth, not to lie. We had to, sometimes you know that uh, when I was growing up, I'm going to throw myself under the bus. When I was growing up, you know, my father had to discipline me because no one had to teach me how to lie. But when I told something that was not true or when I disobeyed my parents and done things like that, no one taught me to do that. But the nature, the sin nature that's inside of me just makes me, it drives me to do things that's not pleasing to God. See, it's very important today that we understand that because today's message is without Jesus, we're dead. We're dead. But with Jesus, we are alive. See, we come today to celebrate that it's a risen Savior, and a lot of people will shout and sing, and, and we will be excited about what Jesus has done for me and you. But the truth is that some have not experienced that resurrection experience in their life. They have not received Jesus and understand exactly what Jesus has for them. Let me give you, let me give you what Ephesians 5, 6 says. Ephesians 5, 6 says, let no one deceive you with empty words. Mm. Here's what I want to do today. I don't want to come up here and give you empty words. I want to give you the truth. I don't want one day when something, when, when you go and to, to meet the Father and you would say, man, I wish that pastor would have warned me. I don't want you there and wonder, why did the pastor make it so easy? Why didn't he tell me the truth about how I could have eternal life? And, and, and to let me know exactly what, what the Word of God says. Why didn't he teach me about repentance and for forgiveness of my sins? Why didn't he teach me that? 
Instead of just making it so easy. See, today, we have to realize that we're all dead to sin. Let me just stop a minute. I was raised in a church. Um, Sue probably can tell you better than anyone in this room. But I have been told that when I came from the hospital, I was born on November 28, 1965. Whatever that first Sunday was after that day, I heard that my father and my mother brought me into the church. And I sit just like you did. They brought me. They taught me from the time I was a little child. I can tell you all kinds of wonderful Bible stories that Sunday school teachers taught me. I had some of the greatest Sunday school teachers that was ever around. I still use it today when I go to the mission field. I listened to my father preach and even came early. As a young believer came and I thought what I had done and surrendered my life to Jesus. But let me tell you what I was missing. See, I, I knew, I believed, but I hadn't received. I hadn't received that gift. I knew. Sue can probably remember this. I remember and. In my senior year of school in 1984, that I, I walked the aisle, and I remember coming down to the front of the aisle. And I remember feeling so guilty because here's what I had been to so many I know I would go to hell. My daddy said, okay, you, 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 you made that decision. No, what I had done was I knew all the things, but I hadn't received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. See, today, here's what I want you to do. I want to get you to the place that you see. And you go back to that place and you remember when you was dead in your trespasses. And God raised you up as we celebrate today that risen Savior. I want you to think about that day that he brought you alive. And, so, and you surrendered your life and you made him Lord of your life. And we can't do that without me asking this question. The question is... Can the resurrection, can the resurrection change you? Can the resurrection change you? Now this morning we're going to go to a very different place for today's message. Probably one that I don't know if you've heard anyone share from this area, but when I was in my studies, I called one of my pastor friends who I love very much, and we were talking every week. He, he listens and he, he helps me and we go back and forth with scripture, and I said, God's just doing this, doing this, and this is where I want to go. This is where I think God is leading me today. So I'm, I'm telling you what God's been sitting in that office across the street, uh, across the parking lot. What he's been doing in my heart, I'm going to share with you today because it just makes you, some, at some point, you, you're going to feel the presence of God. I know that you, you're going to get excited about what God's doing. So if you would, if you would turn in the book of Ephesians, Chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, and I want to look at verses 4 through 6. And I want us just to think about, I want you to think about, can the resurrection change you? Change you. From Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4, but God. I want you to think just a minute. He starts this off. The first three verses is telling us all about sin and the things that we have in our lives that, that, that when we walk the ways of the world, when we was walking by flesh and, and when we were doing the things, it talks about the different sins. But then it starts off in verse 4. And he says, but God. Boy, is that not life changing? Yes. But God. All the things you listen to what he said but God being rich in mercy because of his great love which he loves us even when he was were dead in our transgressions made us alive together with Christ by grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus Amen. but God but God, in the middle of our sins, He made us alive. Now, I think before we can go any further, here's what I want to do. I've done told you that I didn't want to build, I didn't want to give you a bunch of empty words. I want, I want you to be able to be, be touched. I want the Holy Spirit to be able to draw you today. Listen, I think I need to go back to Ephesians chapter 1 and just read you this verse. 
Listen to what he says in verse 18. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. So that you will know the hope. Let's just stop right now. Because this needs to be our prayer today in the service. That God would open our eyes to enlighten our heart. To speak to us exactly what he has for each one of us. Let's pray. Our dear Father, I come to you right now, Lord. As I read this scripture, Father, I do want to call out to you. Father, we need you to speak to our hearts. Show us the things that you would have for us, Lord. Use us in a mighty way today. Father, I pray, Lord, that your word will come out clear. And, Father, that it will penetrate the hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. It says, I pray that the eyes of your heart be enlightened. So that you will know what is the hope. Of his calling. What are the riches of glory. His inheritance in the saints. And what is. The surpassing greatness. Of his power towards us. Who believe. These are in accordance. With the working of the strength. Of his mind. Let me say this right now. It's God. Who does the drawing. Amen. But God. Here's what we were praying just then. That God would open our hearts and our minds. That we may see the things that God would show us. That they wouldn't come just empty words. But that they would penetrate our hearts and move today. Here's what I know without a doubt. You can't talk about the resurrection and being able to celebrate today without being fired up about it. You know, it's everything that we believe in. It's the hope that God gives us when we see, when we see this. So we started out and we read, but God, but God. And then you look at verse 5 and he says, made alive. But God, he made us alive. See, it's what Jesus done. It's not what Keith has done. God teaches us about God's mercy and love and grace. Our dead bodies can be made alive again. Did you hear what I said? Our dead bodies. Our sins can be forgiven and we can become back in that relationship with Jesus again and walk with him. Have you ever, you ever um, heard people say, there's some people that I've been around, I've invited friends, and they come in to church and, and you say, hey, how'd you like the church? Good. <laughs> Did God speak to you today? Nah, not really. Well, what did you get out of service? Really didn't get anything. Uh, 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 They're just not interested. They're not interested. They just came maybe to keep keep shut up or I wouldn't keep them biting them. You know, sometimes you can aggravate somebody enough and they'll just do it because you've aggravated them enough to think, well, if I go, he'll shut up and leave me alone. They're just not interested. But let me tell you something. God's interested. Let me tell you this right now. You're here. And God is interested yes. in making you alive again. Yes. Amen. He's wanting to give you life through the working and power and the strength that he has. Yes. Let me give you an example of what we're going to do. And I don't know if this will make sense. I wish I'd got the brother Mike and asked him before. I have this weird sense of humor how I can explain things. So I'm going to give it to you the way I see it. Here's what I pray happens today. You, you remember when you went in the jury store for all you men who's married? You went in the jury store and you're looking for the right ring for your, your spouse. And you look in that in that glass and you look down there and there's a diamond boy. I can't afford that one. There ain't no way. Just put it down a little bit further down the road to a small one. Well, you get to that ring and it's so small you really can't tell what the diamond really looks like. And here's what he will do. He will pull out a map that would be solid black. Black felt. He lays it out and he'll take his hand. Normally he'll take that thing he'll smooth it real clear. And then he sits the ring on top of it. And that little bitty diamond, you know what happens to that little bitty diamond? It starts showing up. Boy, him going to like this here. This is it. Here's what I 
about, here's what I want to do today. I want you to think about the reason I talked about death to start with is that black felt that we laid out is our sins and the wrath of God that was put, that he took for me. He took it to the cross. He laid it all out. He was stretched out on this cross. The diamond is Jesus. When he paid that price, when he prayed that price, when he paid that price for my sins, Jesus laid it all. And I pray that today as me and you look at this message, it's just like that diamond. You start looking at it and you fall in love with that diamond. And as you fall in love, that, that ring's going to change everything. And you take it and give it to your bride. Today I pray that as you look with the backdrop of sin and we look at what Jesus done, your eyes will be open and to be able to see what God is doing. Easter, when we come, a lot of people can't tell you really why we even come to celebrate Easter. They'll say, well, Jesus died or rose again. Those are all great answers. And it is the truth. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 says, The good news is that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture and that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day. That is the good news of Jesus. But today I want to give you some things to look at. Easter speaks of mercy. Easter speaks of mercy. There's some key words that I want you to listen to. It says, but God being rich in mercy. Rich there means, it means unlimited, overbounding, uh, un unlimited. He has the riches that are built up for me and you. Riches in mercy. He has built for me and you. Let me just uh, put it just very plain. God took, through his riches and mercy, he took the initiative, he took the initiative, the initiative, initiative to provide salvation for me and you. He took it on his own. Let me just say before we go any further, that it was God who rescued us from our sins that gives us life. It is nothing that you can do. Absolutely nothing that you can do to, uh, to have eternal life except through Jesus. Jesus is the only way that you will have eternal life. I want you to think about this. We go through life and we've heard the story so many times about the death, burial, and resurrection that sometimes we come to church and it's hard to get really started up and get, get excited about it because we've been around it so many times. But I want you to think about this today as, as we're going through and as we think. It was nothing that me and you do. It's Jesus, God, drawing you. It's God who, who, who sent Jesus that, that stepped off the throne to come to earth to make a way for me and you to be able to have eternal life. And it's all around his mercy. But as we look at this, as we look at the words, but God... It was God who did all of this for us. We were swimming. I want you to think about it. I was, I was, when I was sitting in my office, and again, this is weird. I know it's weird. But it's kind of like being in the water. You ever been in the water in Florida? And your kids are out there in the ocean. The waves are coming. And your kids can get out to a certain point, and you start hollering. The kids don't see any danger at all. But you know there's danger. And you start calling them and bringing them in. I looked at that this week and I was thinking, that's exactly what God did for me. I was separated from him. I didn't, I didn't realize that I was in danger. But he sent his son Jesus to come, to rescue you, to give you warning. You need Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He stepped down off the throne. Can you imagine? He stepped down off of that throne and come down and to earth and went to that cross for you and me. Mercy is God not giving up, giving us what we deserve. Because what we deserved was death. Yeah. Romans 6.23 again. 
For the wages of sin is death. The payment for my sins is death. If I went and I worked a 40 hour a week job and they paid me $10 an hour, I would get $400 that week for one week's work for 40 hours. That's, after, that's before taxes. Take I know you don't bring on that. But here, here's what I, I want you to know. That would be the wages that you deserve that you took. The wages for my sin is death. Is death. But God's mercy, God's mercy says that he took, he did that. I want you to think about this. Did Jesus ever say, let me tell you what you deserve. See, some of you would probably think, no, Jesus didn't do that. He's full of love and mercy and he came. But John 3.36, red letter edition, you know, Jesus speaking. Here's what he says. He who believes in the Son has eternal life. But he who does not obey the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. The wrath of God. We preached about that last week. It's my sins. I pay the price for my sins. It's the wrath of God that comes upon me. The payment for my sins come upon me. I went to a funeral this week. I have a good friend uh, named Scott Smith. And uh, his wife passed away last week. A uh, very godly family. At this funeral, we celebrated. We celebrated the death of his wife. Wife. Here's the reason why. Because we had seen, she had surrendered her life. She had turned away from the evil things, and she was trusting God. And, and, and you could see that, that Jesus lived in her life, and it was a celebration. And I remember Scott. Scott said, if she looked to come back, I wouldn't ask her to come back. She wouldn't want to come back. I said, I want to go and be with her in heaven. Because I know that's where she is, is in heaven with, him, with the Lord. Here's what I want to tell you. You know why he can say that? It's because he's seen Jesus in the time that Jesus saved her and, and brought her to her and showed mercy to her. She was a great, great woman. But there's so many times we go to funerals and people say, Man, I can't wait to see them in heaven. And they never knew Jesus. It's not just a free gift that we're going to get without receiving. You've got to receive. See, we make it so much when we talk about mercy and stuff. People think sometimes, hey, I can just get it. It's going to take it. I'm going to be able to go and I'm going to be able to do these things. No. No. Please listen today. The reason that she can speak, you can speak that truth, is because you've seen Jesus in her life. You can see the change that was in her life. Jesus on the cross paid a debt that he did not know. He paid a debt that he did not know. Verse 5 again, he says, With God being rich in mercy because of his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. There's a song. I wish I could give you the title. I just want you to think about it. I'm going to give you just a little phrase of this song. He knew, and yet, and yet he loved. Amen. Hang on. Let it, let it sink in. He knew, and yet he loved. What do you mean, Keith? He knew Keith. He knows you. He knows everything about you. Kim knows me better than anyone in this world. That's my spouse. She knows me better than anyone in this world. But he knows me even better. And even though he knows me, oh, listen to this. He still loves me. Oh, wait a minute. It ain't caught me. Yeah, it did. He knows everything about you. And he still loves you. Yes, he did. Yes, Think he did. about this statement. A lot of times, a lot of time people will say, "If you knew that person, <laughs> you wouldn't love him." Not Jesus. Okay. Not Jesus. Okay. Let me tell you one that we'll never be able to do. <clears throat> when it comes time that our day that we're going 
we're going and we're going to stand before judgment, you'll never be able to look back and say, he didn't love me. You will never be able to say, I didn't know he didn't love me. No matter what you've done, if you choose to reject God and his free gift of salvation, you can't say he didn't love me because he went to the cross for all of us. Jesus went and he nailed it to the cross. He took key sins. That day when I come forward and I went to my father up at the altar to tell him what I needed to do, I realized that Jesus had taken all of my sins the wrath of my sins, the lies that I have told, the anger that I've had built up in my life, the, the way that I had lived my life against God. And now he has taken it and he has placed it on his body. And he died and I accepted that free gift of salvation. And when I accepted that free gift of salvation, no matter what happened, he showed that love when he went to the cross. You just didn't receive it. It wasn't because he didn't want to give it to you. Jesus loves us even though he knows us. 1 John 2, 2 says, And he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for, our, not for ours only, but also for those who, of the whole world. You know that word, that hard word that I struggle a little bit speaking? Propitiation. Me and Kim, she's worked with me for two days. <laughs> so let me, let me tell you what it means in the Old Testament. Let me, let me talk to you just for a minute in the Old Testament what this means. That means the mercy seat. In the Old Testament, in the Hebrew language, if you look up what that word means, it means the mercy seat. Oh, let me tell you about the mercy seat. Here's the mercy seat. In the Holy of the Holies, when they would come, the high priest would enter into the Holy of Holies. And they would take a, 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 an animal. And they would kill this animal. And when you got into the Holy of Holies, there was a golden slab that was laid out. And the laws that had been broken was up under the slab. And the priest would come in. No one else could enter. Please, please listen. No one else could come in this into the Holy of Holies or they would die. He came in. He took that blood, that blood that was shed, that innocent animal that was killed, and he lays that blood across that golden seat, that mercy seat. When God looks down, he no longer sees the sin, but he sees the blood. Oh, wait a minute. Think about it now. That word says, listen, listen, listen. And he himself, he himself is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for those of the whole world. Yeah. Yeah. He himself, it was Jesus. I looked the word up in the Greek. The Greek means brings them to reconcile back unto him. My sins, I was separated. I was dead. I was dead. But now that Jesus came and he died and he shed that blood, when God looks down, when I accept that free gift of salvation, he looks down. He don't see Keith in my way. He sees his blood of his son that died on that cross for my sins. That's what he sees. Man. All these years, people say, I can't do it. I can't do it. It's not you doing it. Jesus did it. Amen. See, it took a perfect gift, that, that perfect gift that nothing else could have took that place but Jesus himself. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice, sinless, the perfect Lamb of God. Amen. Oh, how do you know, Keith? He's alive. Yeah. He's alive. He's alive. Yeah. He's alive. He is alive. Perfect sacrifice. The mercy seat covered our debts. Mercy is God's compassion for the helpless. And he issues action. He just didn't see our helplessness. He sent action by sending his son Jesus. 
It's the reconciliation with someone. Easter also speaks of his word, and I'll hurry. I'll make this very quick. Romans 5 8 says that God demonstrated his love for us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Jesus loves us. It speaks of an unconditional love. It's a love like no other. 1 John 3, 1 says, See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us that we would be called children of God. And such we are. Mm. For this reason, the world does not know us because it did not know Him. What it is saying here is that His love, there's nothing that compares with the love of God. Jesus coming down and extending his self on the cross so that me and you would have life. It speaks of mercy. It shows you of God's love, how much he loved you, that he would give everything for your life. And it also speaks of grace. Verse 5 says, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved and raised up with him and seated seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Grace is a gift that we did not deserve. He didn't give us what we deserved. His mercy. Grace, grace is a gift we do not deserve. We didn't deserve what Jesus did for us. But Jesus went to that cross and rose again. It shows us a gift of power. A gift of life. Let's just get to the bottom line today. The bottom line is, is that Jesus loves us so much that he gave everything he needed. He conquered death. The punishment for our sins was death. Separated from him. But because of God's grace, because of his mercy, we didn't deserve it, but Jesus came and he died for you and me. It says like this. Let's listen to this. Maybe I can explain it the best like this. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3, here's what he says. I know we didn't read this in the beginning, but, but listen, this will help explain it. Among them, we too are formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we were by nature children of wrath. Even at the risk. See, we're born into that sin nature which drives us to do things of the world, the lust of the flesh, what we want. We want to be Lord of our own life. It's our nature to do these things. But listen to what verse 5 said. I mean, yeah, verse 5. Even when we were dead in our transgressions. That means even when you were separated from God and you was dead to life. Here's what he says. We were dead in our transgressions. Made us alive together with Christ. Let me, let me give it to you. By grace, you have been saved. By nature, we're children of wrath. By grace, you have been saved. If you choose to stand on your own, you're self-condemned. It means I made that choice. I made that decision that I could handle things and stand before a holy God and to be able to, to account and pay the wages for my sin. That's what you're saying. When you separate from God. When you say, I want to do it myself. But when we accept that free gift of salvation, it's when I choose to surrender to Jesus and to receive His mercy and His love and His grace. Easter speaks of life. Can you imagine when they ran to that tomb and that stone was rolled away, by the way. You know, they, wasn't, they didn't even realize they were leaving so early that morning. They just wanted to, to get Jesus' body completely um, 
completely spice and all that stuff. They had their spices. And when they ran, they, they, they got to talking, how are we going to move that big old stone that's sitting in front of that tomb? They get there, and they run all the way down to that tomb. And they realize that stone is rolled away. And when they see that stone rolled away, the angel tells them, let's look at it one more time real quickly. I want you to think about this. She said, Verily, very early on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb, and when the sun had risen, they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone from us from the entrance of the tomb? Looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away. And although it was extremely large, entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting at the right, wearing a white robe. And they were amazed. And he said to them, Do not be amazed. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who has been crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Behold, here is the place where he laid him. But go and tell the disciples and Peter. Jesus has risen. The tomb is empty. Death has been conquered. Now here's one thing I can tell you. If you know me very well, I love that of the win. I like to win. I, I play hard every every sport. So if, if I'm in some type of something, I love to win. Here's what I want to tell you. Death has been conquered. Yeah. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And today we can celebrate because we know if we leave this place today that I am present with God because I'm no longer dead to my sin. I'm alive in Christ. And He has made a way for me. Listen to this. I want to ask you this question and we're, we're ending. John 11, 25 says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Amen. That's Jesus asking. Do you believe it? Do you believe this? See, here's what I, 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 I want to make sure that we understand today. God showed mercy. God showed love. God showed grace. He loved you like no one else could ever love you. When Jesus conquered death, he made a way for me and you to have salvation. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Today can be the day of salvation. You know, there could be no greater, no greater thing here on Easter. To be able to set life. You know, we're here celebrating that life that has risen from the grave. What better way is it today to say, hey, I surrender. I want life. I want to put my faith and trust in Jesus and make him Lord of my life. You know, I read earlier, Romans 5, 8 said, God demonstrated his love for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died. See, the thing is, every one of us are the same as sitting in the room. Here's the great thing. There is nothing different in your life than it was in every one else's life. We're all sinners. Here's where the difference comes. If I go to give you a gift, and I hand that gift to you, you have to receive that gift. You didn't do anything really to deserve it or whatever. You receive it. it, it if I, if I took a, my grandson sitting on the front, if I, if I took a gift that I had bought from him and I just handed it to him, he would reach out and he would receive that gift. That gift is Jesus and what he did for me on the cross. When he took my sins and he went all the way to the grave and he conquered death. Jesus paid it all for us. Do you believe it? Today you may be here and maybe, maybe, maybe you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Maybe not. The altar's open. We want you to come and receive Jesus. But today maybe you're looking for a church home. And Green Briar's where you want it to be. I would love for you to come and say, yes, I want to make this my family and be a part of what's going on here at Green Briar. Or maybe today 
Maybe you just want to get to this altar and just thank the Lord. Thank you for dying for my sins. Because today, if you know Him as Lord and Savior, you have Let's pray. Our dear Father, I thank you for this day. Father, I thank you for this time and this message. Father, I pray right now that you would move and that there would be lives changed today. Father, give us the boldness for whatever you're speaking to us. May we speak out. May we move and respond to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask that the pastor and Lord have ever come up and here at the altar. There's people here to pray with you. Please stand. You can stand.
these things. This is what I'd like to do. Uh, why don't we all be seated? Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm just going to ask you to bow your head. The Holy Spirit's here. He's moving. Zeke's so going to continue to sing. The, the invitation's still open. I don't want it to stop. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to be in a place that you know. Don't say no.
and we'll look at it and explain it in a way, but here's what I know. At this young age, God is working on her heart. And she's gone forward. She was brave enough to come down these, these stairs and say, yes, I need Jesus. And so she comes forward today to surrender her life. And we will, we, we will be talking as soon as it's over. And then I have my brother Drew. Y'all know Drew. Drew's part of the family. This morning, he's in most services, both times. He's been listening to the word. He realized that there were some things in his life that, that may be confused about or, or just got working. Let's just say that. He realized that today, today, he wants to come and he's nailing it down and trusting Jesus as the Lord.